and welcome to Let's Go Speaks. Today is Friday, December 20th, and this is episode 260, I think. Gus is literally trying to get into the yarn bag with me right here, with the yarn bag right here. So I apologize if I'm slightly distracted. I'm trying to keep him at bay. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry, the Fat S-Q-R-R-L on Instagram. I hope you're doing well. Tomorrow is the longest night, y'all. Tomorrow night's the longest night. I'm kind of sad. I'm always kind of sad, Solstice. Like, I, the older I get, the more I'm okay with the dark. <laughs> and that sounds creepy, but it's true. I can't help it. I get, I like enjoy the, I enjoy the longer night. I enjoy the more introspective time. My family is not happy. Both my husband and my daughter, I think, suffer a bit from the seasonal affective disorder. So I'm like just plying them with vitamin D and being like, sorry, but this is my time. I'm a winter wife. I need like the snowbird of relationships. Like you just come in during the winter to be my partner and in the summer you need to leave because I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to do things. But in the winter, I got it. That's right, the winter wife. <sighs> so this episode doesn't have a ton of stuff but I think I'm gonna do a few shorter episodes in December. Um, a, so it's slightly less overwhelming for me. B, so it's slightly less overwhelming for you. And, well, there's no C. C cuz, cuz I wanna. Cuz, what is that? How did you get a bobbin, buddy? He's got a sewing bobbin in his mouth. Where'd you get that, buddy? Yeah, I know you're super good at finding things for me. Gus is great at finding things. Annie, you're just wonderful. Anyway. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to do some shorter ones. Yeah. Do you want to say hi? No, she does not want to say hi. <laughs> she wants me to tug of war with her. Um, so that's what's going to happen. So this episode will have some knitting. It will have some crochet. And it will have some spinning. And then it will have, before that maybe, it will have um, some crafts of the future. And it will have some beautiful yarn I want to show you. And then it will, at the very end, have a little tiny health update. Which is good. Good news. Uh, but I thought I would, so, several people have asked me the reason that I went uh, that I went in to, to the doctor to see what was going on. And it occurs to me that, I mean, I don't mind to share, that's not private feeling, uh, but it occurs to me that that may be helpful for some folks. I don't know, uh, but I will put that at the end. Okay, now, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the lighting is not perfect. The light is hitting back here, so it may throw us off a bit. But quite frankly, today we're going to the mall and I need to get this recorded. Also, I just wanted to record in my nightgown. I'm not gonna lie to you. Also, full disclosure, it is like 9.30 and I'm in a nightgown. At one point, while well, I was still technically recovering from my surgery, I mean, I still am now, but let's face it, it's all just how I am all the time. The neighbor across the street came to deliver a pack, well, to bring us a package that had been delivered to the wrong house. And it was like 2.15 in the afternoon and I was wearing a nightgown on a weekday. <laughs> There's really no excuse for that. And yet, <laughs> I can't believe I'm a nightgown convert. Like, what's up with that? Whatever. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so that's why the lighting's weird. Uh, but let's just talk about some stuff, okay? Okay. So, let me first show you the thing I'm excited about. Okay, well, I'll show you this, too, because I'm excited about this. Did you see that Nitpicks has released a new marled dishy? It's available in, like, 15 colors or something. And they're all very cute, but I had to go with this one, and I'm so excited to use it. Um, yeah, Baker's Twine Dishcloths in my life. 
gonna happen. I'm very excited about it. The aqua one was also very tempting. I think they'd be super cute used in conjunction with one another, but yeah, I'm super excited. It feels very soft. Ooh, so that was just a random aside. But then another yarn thing I got that I wanted to show you. I was, I, I feel like this is bragging, so I don't know how to say it. But I was super lucky to be invited to hang out with some amazingly awesome knitters last weekend. It was just last weekend. Time's getting weird, y'all. And it was amazing. It was like a retreat without it being a retreat. It was a retreat, though, because I retreated. And I was full of treats. It was amazing. I'm so sorry. I just, like, went on a random like rant that I didn't really need to go on with you. <laughs> so I'll come back. <laughs> it was all to say that I had an amazing weekend with knitter friends and wool friends and I am so thankful that that has come into my life. I was always like a one friend person. You know what I mean? Like I had one friend. Like I needed the one friend to go with um, during the fire drill at school, right? Like that was my... Every year, the stress of like high school where you're changing classes every or changing every period was that I needed to make sure I had at least one person to stand with at a fire drill. Now those are technically acquaintances because you know, but whatever, like I'm usually like a very small friend list person. And I never thought that like, I would have enough friends to like hang out with friends for a weekend at a knitting retreat. Like, like that is such a, what? I've never had knitter friend friends before. I mean, in college was slightly different, but we had like other things in common to start off with. Okay, I'm just rambling, but I'm just saying that I was really excited and I'm really lucky and I'm very thankful. And I'm gonna cry if I don't stop talking about it. So I'm just gonna stop talking about it. Okay, but because of that, one of our friends is Sarah from Another Crafty Girl. And she dyed us this colorway and I think you all need to beg her to bring it to El Publico. That's not a word. It's inspired by Wingspan. So the colorway is called Keep in Flight, which is like such a beautiful sentiment. Okay, I'm gonna stop crying. But look at that color, and isn't it gorgeous? The aqua with the teal and the smoky purpley gray. Oh, and the sky blue. It's so gorgeous. So this is her Strong Sport, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I am just, sorry, the lighting is changing and messing us all up. I am just so excited about it. I think it needs to be a hat. Ooh! So lots of other amazing shenanigans happened on the retreat. I can't even name them all. But one of them is that we, um... Okay, there's two I'll tell you about. One, I did, um, we, we were teasing about how many breakouts we were having because we were just, it's so fun to get to be with people who are excited about learning new things, right? Like, it's unfortunate that that's not everybody in the population, but um, it's not. And so it's just so exciting to be with people who want to learn new things and want to teach other people new things. And... So we had breakout sessions in our like super chill friend re retreat. <laughs> I got to teach people how to make um, beeswax wraps. Now I'm no way ex an expert. I might try to do a tutorial just to like introduce it to you if it's something you've been interested in because it's it's actually quite fun. I really enjoy the process of making them and then it's also a useful thing. Um, so I'm going to try to do that for you. Just like a super casual, it's like a talktorial. It's not maybe your best resource for learning a new thing, but maybe it's your best introduction to learning a new thing that you didn't know you wanted to learn. You know what I mean? So that was super fun. And then we also did Amber Jar and Hoarder. Oh my gosh, right? I'm, I know fancy people. Totally did a granny square breakout. Because lots of folks had not made granny squares. Now, I learned to crochet first. So my mom and my grandmother were crocheters. So I did actually learn to crochet first. And so I have made crochet. I have made granny squares. In fact, 
don't be jealous. In high school, I totally made a granny square purse for my bestie, who is still my bestie, even though we don't see each other very often. Just saying. But I had not made a granny square in a very long time. Now, as a non-crocheter, like as a non-primary crocheter, I love the granny square because my whole problem with crochet is that I never know, like on the beginning or the end of a row, where it is. Like I don't know what the beginning or the end of my row is. So the granny square, you don't need to know about that because you're knitting into like a big space rather than knitting into like the first or last stitch of a row. So, but that, all that is to say that like I was just not, and it wasn't on my radar at all to be making granny squares. Um, but then she taught us how to make granny squares and helped refresh me. And I learned some new techniques that I had not used before, which I really liked. So that was awesome. Um, and so everybody got so excited about it and it was so exciting and it was so fun to do with scraps and things that we decided to do a swap. So now my granny square love is invigorated because it's a super quick little like to just do a square is a super quick little project so you feel a, like some accomplishment then if you use up scraps like for me that's another feeling of accomplishment or maybe even just not necessarily scraps but yarn you just you loved but you didn't know how to use i'm just excited about it. so here's my granny square so far oh my gosh so this is the one that i did at the place and this is um hedgehog fibers skinny singles um held double because i was curious to know if it would be difficult to hold um the yarn doubled and do it um, and it's not it's actually way easier to hold yarn doubled for crochet than it is to do it for knitting because of the hook you don't miss strands like you know when you're knitting with two strands it's easy for me to only catch one of them like i feel like i should just put this up and then just talk behind it for the rest of the episode um but you know, when you're knitting with two strands, it's very easy to only catch one of them. In crochet, I did not find that to be the case at all. In fact, in this whole square, I never had that happen. So these are Hedgehog Fibers singles. I think I said that. Skinny singles held double. I was trying to remember what the colorway is, but let's face it, I'm not going to happen. And this yarn was given to me by a beautiful viewer, Janet. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that was my first one. And if you're a super crocheter, you'll probably notice that at the top, I did some half doubles instead of some double crochets, um, simply because we were trying to aim for like a certain dimension. And mine was like close, but not exactly. So I just used half doubles around the edge and that worked really nicely. Right. Sorry, I had to stop because I had like a total panic attack that I had not been recording the whole time because my camera did something funky. Oh my gosh. So anyway, last time I wanted to show you, Gustav, last time I wanted to show you um, my Knit Spin Farm advent calendar, my Batvent calendar, um, but I had already spun up the day, so, and I was refusing to open the next day because I'm not an animal. I totally didn't know that some people buy their admin things and then open them all at the beginning, which I think is so cute and funny. And it just, it's even funnier to me that it didn't even occur to me, like as an option, because I do love a rule. It didn't even occur to me. <laughs> so I'm laughing both at myself and the people who open them all at once. I love you guys. Anyway, so here is my number 20. I already opened it, but I'm just gonna show it to you. Um, so each day was one of these cute little bags so you don't feel guilty about waste, right? Now, not every day had an extra, but most days did have an extra. And today's extra was this super cute ornament. And the extras, other than the candy extra, right? The extras have all had tutorials about how to make the thing and they've all been very awesomely charming things and ways to use up either scraps or maybe like packaging and papers that are around the house, right? So this today's ornament is this. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? How cute is this? And of course this is like totally a basic idea. Come on camera. 
work with me. It's like, I don't want to show people your creepy fingernail lady. That's what it was, it knew. How cute is that? So you could totally, she just used another piece on the back. So you could totally just use some like boxes that are like around the house, like your cereal boxes or something. Cause you're using the wrong side as the right side of this project. So you could just usually just tell you some cereal boxes and some of your leftover yarn scraps. I kind of now even maybe want to make some giant ones because I can never just stay in my lane, right? But wouldn't that be amazing? It would be so exciting. Gustav, really. So it has that. Sometimes they have um, nature facts or, I mean, that sounds trite, but like information about nature stuff cuss and then today's bat is this right so you just get this like beautiful little strip of bat it's the exact perfect amount to spin every day actually some days I want twice a hundred times as much but <laughs> I have been enjoying them so much. It's a great excuse to motivate myself to spin every day, which I really showing me that that's what I need to do in the new year. Cause I really do enjoy it. It's just making the time for it. And it's just making the time in a way that I have the time, but have devoted it to other things like looking at the dumb internets. So just put my phone down for 15 to 20 minutes a day and spin that dude. And it is so pleasant. Right. Oh, enjoying it so much and you know what I'm super I am super enjoying which I would have never thought I would like is there's this gold tinsely stuff in here now this seems finer than the other one but maybe that's just because when I was spinning it I was looking at it closer there's this like gold still I guess it's still considered Stellina in there come on I know you want to show everybody, there we go, my puffy sleeve nightgown, but settle down. See those like gold? I would not normally think I would like that. I'm not a huge gold person. So enjoying it. So I'm going to show you this baba. Now this is not the 19th, because um, some of you are probably going to fact check me. But this is what I have on this bobbin, and it also has that gold in it, and it is so enjoyable. Right? And doesn't this just look like solstice night? Well, it doesn't because it's too light, but... Right? So, the reason I have it on two different bobbins is that my Hanson actually, uh, a while ago... I've had my mini spinner since I looked it up. November of 2015. So, it's just right at its fourth year. We're, we're on, into the fifth year. Anyway, is that right? Okay, I'm going to stop thinking about it. I was experienced, I, um, about a year ago, I think I had, um, if you have a Hanson, the lights flash on it to show you like if there's an error. So like if you're trying to run your motor too fast or you're trying to have too much uptake on the, um, the fiber, uh, it will flash in a certain sequence to tell you like what's, you know, if, if there's an error of some sort, it will flash to, to diagnose the error. Um, and I was getting the one that said, motor control error, contact hands, and don't you steal my yarn, Gus. Contact hands, which of course is terrifying. Um, so they diagnosed it with me, even, you know, over email, what was going on. And, and it seemed to, to be okay. Well, then I was, I had another issue on this. No, Gus. He loves the yarn. He wants this yarn very badly. You can't have that. Um, so I emailed, no, I emailed again when I started, I had the problem the last time because I, I did the same thing I did before and it didn't work. And they instantly replied back. Actually, they didn't even reply back. They instantly sent, created an order for a part to be replaced again. And I even wrote in the email, I purchased this November of 2015 because I didn't know if it mattered, like what vintage of mini spinner you had. Um, so I referenced the, t the date of my purchase in the email. And again, before they even responded, they sent, they generated an order to send out a part um, that they thought that the, my, my machine needed. 
And I did not put like any sort of Instagram name or anything so they could, they did not know of if I had a following or not. So I'm very pleased that hopefully it fixes it. But even if it doesn't, I'm very pleased with how efficient they, their turnaround time was for questions on their helpline. And they just took care of it as best they could instantly. So go them. But I had that issue and so I have to, I've had to switch to my, um, my um, ladybug, which I also enjoy spinning on. The only reason I spin on my mini spinner more often is because when, like these are my, these are my thighs and this is like my butt, right? When I spin on a treadle wheel, I think it's because I have such fleshy thighs. There's lots of fleshiness in there. My tendency is to rotate my hips out. And so when I do that, it, it hurts my hips. I have to be, if I'm spinning on a wheel with treadle, I have to be super, like I have to put like my kindergarten teacher in my head where she would yell at people to put their knee, she would yell at girls to put their knees together. Like I have to have that real, <laughs> voice like strongly playing in my head because as soon as I relax again my knees separate um just to allow more thigh spread I guess to my knees separate and my hips rotate out and it's not good for my hips my hips do not like that uh, but they don't tell me until I stand up <laughs> and I'm like oh crud so that's the reason I spin on this the e-spinner more often that said, I've just been keeping that in my mind to keep my knees together and it's been doing fine for the, for the other wheel. Info for you that you didn't necessarily need. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm enjoying that so much. Yay! So that's my spinning. And of course, I'm super excited to spin even more. And then the combination of this crochet in with it is really lighting a fire under me. Because the beautiful thing about these crochet squares is that they're thicker, they're, they're worsted weight. So I have some skeins back here that are heavier yarns that I've just been like, just kind of, not that I've been anti-using, but I just haven't used them. It's a great way to use them up. And it's also a like fun reason to spin worsted weight. Now I'll not be able to spin worsted weight now that I'm trying. I'll only be able to spin fingering, whatever. It is what it is. But so yay, that. Okay, so then knitting. I don't have any finished objects and I don't have anything new. There's 75 new plans, but I don't think there's anything actually new. So I finished one of my West Yorkshire Spinners socks. I'm so excited about It's super cute. Right? So I got this from the Wooly Thistle. This is their 2019 colorway or holiday colorway, excuse me. And then I have got a cuff. I'm almost, yep, I'm almost ready to start my heel flap on this one. I am knitting on double points. I, uh, I typically am a magic loop sock knitter, but every once in a while I just, and I think it's frequently with these like um, non-merino wools. I, for some reason I want to knit them on double points, so. These are on double points. If I'm gonna knit socks on double points, they're gonna be carbons. I have not found another sock, a double point yarn sock. Oh my gosh. I have not found another set of double point needles that I enjoy nearly as much. I don't enjoy their um, fixed circulars. I've tried to use them on the, on the smaller gauges um, and I do not like them. I do not like the join. So for Magic Loop, I definitely still use my Chow Goose, but when it comes to double points, I am all about the carbons. So there is that. And then I have my shawl that I'm working on for Tova. It's the Raven Hill Shawl by Tammy Gore, and it is written for Aaron or DK Weight Yarns. And here is mine so far. Sorry, it's on a shorter needle, so it's a little bit harder to show you, but easier to work with. Right. So this part is Hedgehog Skinny Singles in the Raku colorway held double, or excuse me, held triple with a skein of Southampton Yarns Mohair Silk. That's, that's not right. 
Village Yarns. Valley Yarns. Oh my gosh, Pioneer Valley, come on. Valley Yarns, so it's Webb's of store brand. And this is the Southampton is the mohair silk. And then this is Cascade Aereo, which is one of those hollow blown yarns. And I'm really enjoying knitting with it quite, quite a lot. I even did the baubles. I was like, I'm not doing baubles on black. I did baubles. Now I did not do the baubles that are written in the pattern for probably because my yarn is black. It just did not sunshine. What are you doing to me today? See, that's not good either. Um, it's probably because my yarn is black uh, that it didn't show up like it should, or maybe it's just my knitting. So, uh, but the bobble they use is the knit front and back so that you turn one stitch into four and then you combine them. Um, they did not show up for me. So what I did is knit br front and back into one stitch. You get four, you turn it over, you purl it, you slip a stitch, you purl across, you turn it over, you slip a stitch, you knit across, you turn it over, you purl two together, you purl two together, you turn it over, you slip, slip knit those two together. So you turn four stitches, you get one stitch into four, knit it four times, Turn, take one stitch, turn it into four, knit three even rows essentially, right? No, two even rows. And then you combine them and then combine them again. So there's lots of different ways to make a bobble, y'all. But that's the way I did it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I may have to get more of this Aereo, which I anticipated because it calls for more yarn than I had. Um, and we'll see if it's actually like big enough. I'm afraid it's gonna be too short, but I think it will still block quite a bit too. So we'll see. It's certainly very fuzzy and it will be mega, de mega death warm. Super warm, not for my menopausal sisters. Okay, okay. Whew. Uh, okay, so I'm showing it to you not too much. That's crazy time. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you the craft that I want to work on. Is that goofy? But I'm excited and I want to share stuff with you. It is goofy, but do I care? Yes, I care, obviously, but not enough to not tell you about it. How's that? Okay. So the craft that I wanted to show you that I'm excited about is that, and I apologize. Now I can't remember who showed me on Instagram. Somebody on Instagram posted that they had completed the little stars and they are amazing. Have you seen this? which I believe is completely in German, but whatever, there are pictures I'm told. I'll show you the book. I'm so excited about my straw ornaments, y'all. I cannot tell you how excited I am about these super old school ornaments. So the kit comes with the book. It comes with straw both in natural and colored. I'm not as excited about the colored straw, but whatever. I'm kind of a snob. And then it comes with these little forms and the string you need to use them. And I purchased mine on Etsy from Silver Crow Creations Sundries and Specialties. She is also silvercrowcreations.com. Don't you steal my Joanna wool. Oh my gosh, I was wrapping presents the other day. And in the place that I store the wrapping paper is also stored a bag of unwashed fleece. I know you're supposed to wash fleece as soon as you get it. I know, I know, I know. Shush. But it's like super farmy smelling fleece even. And Gus nearly lost his mind. I, I didn't let him get into it. But his excitement over the... It was in like a bag with a drawstring, like a plastic bag with a drawstring. His excitement over that bag of wool was the best. He was like pulling it around by the cotton drawstring. He was laying on his back, wrapping his arms around it and kicking it. He was in love with it. Stop trying to drink my tea. You're the worst. And he's the best. Annie is not messing anything up. 
anyway, what were we talking about? Oh my gosh, the straw ornaments. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited about the straw ornaments, y'all. I was gonna try to show you the Instagram per picture, but it, my phone apparently is not here, so I won't. But I'm very excited about it. I think this is going to be my solstice craft. Anyway, so there's that. And so then that's all. Okay. So the rest, oh, one small thing. If you super duper loved cats and house coats and you missed the update, I'm going to have another pre-order that I'm going to do the first Friday of January at 9 p.m. Eastern. Now it will be an actual pre-order. So it's a four to six weeks. So that means once I get your order, I order the fabric, which is printed to order. So it's a regular, it's a longer turnaround time. And then I get it in and sew it. So it's a four to six week window. Okay, so if you got in earlier, you got your bags faster. But now I'll just kind of try to open it up to anybody who forgot or missed or what have you. And we'll do an actual pre-order for those. Okay. Now, the rest will just be me talking about healthy health stuff. So if you're not interested, mwah, I will see you next time. If you are interested, then let's chitty chat chat. Okay, so um, obviously I will be talking about um, female reproductive stuff. So if that for some reason freaks you out, then also just for their audios. Okay, so if you're still around, um, just catch up for folks who missed the last episode. I went in for an ultrasound, or excuse me, I went in for um, a hysterectomy and then uh, during the biopsy of one of my ovaries cancer was found, but it was not a gynecological um, cancer. It was an, a GI cancer. So that's what's going on. Um, but I, I've had a few people ask me like in DMs or just in person, like why I went to the doctor in the first place. And so I thought I would talk about that. I'm not uncomfortable talking about it at all. Um, and I don't know, maybe somebody will find it helpful. So, um, just a, on of like, just to kind of give you an idea, I typically am not a going to the doctor kind of lady. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't like to go to the doctor. It's not my favorite thing, um, period. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to go to the doctor very often. So, um, I had not been for a gynecological exam in six years. Now, that said, it was not that I was avoiding it, to be honest with you, I just hadn't even thought about it. Is that something to admit? Now, if I had thought about it, I probably would have avoided it. <laughs> because originally my GP did like your pelvic, like your, an your annual or biannual or whatever exams. And then either they stopped doing that overall. I had to switch my GP left the practice. And so I switched to another person and either she doesn't do them or did not offer to do one. And so I felt uncomfortable even asking or thinking about it. I don't know whatever happened. It happened. Nobody was reminding me to go get a gynecological exam and I kind of forgot. My husband is, has had a vasectomy, so it was not for birth control. And like I hadn't had to go for birth control or anything. So I just kind of let it slip off the radar. Life, right? So I have been experiencing some fatigue issues for a while and some, some weirdness around weight um, in terms of like what my intake is versus what my outtake is and like that not matching up with what my body is doing. <clears throat> I thought, and so I have fatigue, I have a lot of the symptoms of um, an underactive thyroid. I have extreme heat, uh, cold sensitivity in my, well, extreme, it's extreme for me, cold sensitivity in my feet and hands and my butt, because it's also an extremity, let's face it. <laughs> But the funny thing about thyroid issues is that the way we test them in America, and I'm not sure how it goes other places, is that typically, I mean, it's said that typically um, tests don't reveal, re reveal that there's a problem until the problem has been going on for quite some time. So, um, and we have family history of that. 
So I quite, fr and I had done tests, but nothing has shown up. So I just was under the, th the impression that this fatigue and stuff was related to perhaps earlier thyroid dysfunction. So, but then I started to notice that um, like my cycles were getting weirder, like they were getting longer. I was having brown spotting instead of like a more vibrant red. Um, and so cycles are weird, right? Like it's really hard to, to diagnose what's going on with their cycle. Um, I think it's one of the great reasons that I am a fan of menstrual cups. I have not been able to use one myself. Um, but there's, there's, cause there's no way to like, they'll say, well, is your flow heavy, light or medium? And you're like, well, I don't know because I'm not privy to anybody else's situation. So like the only way to get an actual, like somewhat accurate measurement is if you're using something like a menstrual cup, but I've not used one and well, whatever. <laughs> And it's kind of like a frog in the frying pan kind of situation, right? Like when your cycles change, it's usually not like, you know, cycles one through 30 are fine. And then cycle 31 is bonkers and cycles 31 through infinity are bonkers, right? Like you're whatever. And then like you have a weird cycle and then like it goes back to normal. And then you have another weird one and then you have two normal ones and a light one. And then like, so it creeps up on you. Like the change is, is very gradual in most cases. And so like, it's just one of those things that you don't step back and think about very often. Cause you know, you got other stuff going on. And in the minute you have a symptom that seems like it, you know that for example, if you're going to need to go to a new OB, you're going to have six weeks minimum waiting before you can get an appointment. Don't eat the remote cuss. <laughs> you have six months minimum waiting probably before you get an appointment. And usually you're like, well, whatever, by then it'll be fine. Cause it has been like, right. It's been going up and down and doing weird stuff. So it's just hard to realize to take stock in like a long-term view of those, of your cycles. But when I started to real like the spotting, especially, and the like extended length, like in terms of like, you know, 10, 11, 13 days. And I know that F there are lots of people who have way worse situation. In fact, that's one of the reasons I didn't really think about going. My mother, as I was growing up, had crazy menstrual cycles. And so I was just always like, well, it's never been that bad. I must be fine. Um, so like, I come completely aware that my situation is not in any way like the worst situation at all. Like, so that was part of the reason I just wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't clocking it. And like, I have friends who have like the, the three week menstrual cycle, like what? <laughs> that said. So the, the, the extend the length getting longer and longer. And then the very, the brown spotting kind of scared me, not scared me, but was like, that was a big, like what? So I kind of thought like, is this like pre-menopause, right? Like, I mean, I'm 40, I'm almost, what am, how old am I? I'm almost 42. <laughs> I started menstruating very early. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe this, is, so I looked up, I, so I thought, okay, I put in the symptoms of like extended cycles, heavier cycle, brown spotting and fatigue. And I thought I was going to get menopause. Well, it came up as this, the Google suggestion was endometriosis. And I thought, oh, well maybe that's what's going on. Cause again, I have family history of that. So I thought, you know what? I need to make an appointment to see what's going on because I actually had during one of those like, cycles, I had a day where I just could not function. Like not just fatigue, like in the afternoon to, I mean, I've had points where I feel like I was going to cry. It's <laughs> just so tired. You just, for no good reason that you just feel like you're going to weep, you know? But I had one of those days where it's literally the whole day was like that. And I was like, this is crazy. I have to figure out what's going on. So um, so I thought, oh, and so when I looked up in the endometriosis, another thing that came up was increased allergies during your cycle or during the early part of your cycle. And I was like, oh my gosh, funny you mention it, Google. That is exactly what I've been experiencing, but I had not tied the two together at all because I was never even taught to think those two things went together. Anyway. So, okay, I got to figure this out. So I found an OB, like just through the Googling, 
called and made an appointment. Of course, it was like a six to eight weeks for the appointment, but whatever, I knew I needed to go in. I went in, I was all psyched up because especially as a fat woman in, in gynecological practice, you really have to be prepared to advocate for yourself. Is that the right word? I'm talking too many words now. You really have to be prepared. Now, you know, modern kind of perspectives on the situation um, is that like if you're fat, like that's just another thing to deal with for the doctor. It's not something um, that you should be ostracized or put out for or made to feel less for. Uh, but, but let's be honest, that's not what everybody's doing. <laughs> Some OBGYNs will not accept fat patients um, because, or I shouldn't say fat, but very fat patients um, because the reality is that, yeah, it's a lot harder to palpate my stomach than it is to palpate an av um, like a thin person's stomach. Like you're not going to feel things as easily, but like it's not the medieval times. Like there are ultrasound tests that are very affordable. Most OBGYN partner practices have an ultrasound machine in the office. Like it's not even something they have to order. They can just like send you down the hall to do. Neither here nor there. I was on guard. Um, so I went in with my symptoms and what was going on. I don't know if it was because of my symptoms, because of my size, because of my family history or a combination of all three. But for one thing, she was lovely. Um, but she and she said, well, yes, we need to order you an ultrasound. But we're going to wait for about a week because of where I was in my cycle. So I didn't have to like, <laughs> was all ready to fight for myself and then luckily didn't have to. Um, so they scheduled the ultrasound and the ultrasound um, found uterine fibroids, but that's not a big deal, but it found a very large, um, in fact, it's technically a giant complex ovarian cyst. And so that, um, oh, so I'm sorry. One of the other things I was feeling during this whole process, it wasn't the original symptom, but it was, I was feeling like a lot of, t um, like my stomach was hard, not my stomach because that's an organ, my abdomen, like between my, like my bra line and my waistline felt very hard. Um, almost like it did when I was pregnant. Um, it was like, it was taut. You know what I mean? And I was just, I, when I first made the appointment, I wasn't, but as the appointment came closer, like as those weeks passed for the appointment, I just started to feel inc like increasingly uncomfortable. Like I just felt not right, right? But I thought again, endometriosis or something like that, but that's not what it was. Um, but so yeah, so that's why I went in. Like, so fatigue, very hard upper or you know abdomen um cycles getting weird longer you know heavier weird spotting um so those are all pretty much tech the classic reasons you would go in um for an ob consult or an OBGYN consult sorry but yeah so i don't know that that's like good information for you all there was i don't have any other symptoms oh and pressure in the Sorry, I'm forgetting them all already. Like, this is the most disjointed part ever. The other thing was pressure. I had pressure in my pelvic area. Um, not painful, like not painful during sex or anything like that, but I just felt pressure. Um, so, yeah, there was a big thing in there pushing on stuff. <laughs> but that's all there is to it. Um, so, yeah. That's what happened, and that's why I went in. Um, but so, yeah, it's just as a friendly reminder. I mean, you do you, but if you start feeling weird, do talk to somebody. And I mean, and even when you think it's so easy to think that it's one thing, and then just like, again, I was just thinking that all of these symptoms, like the fatigue and the like, blah, were just all, you know, I was thinking in my head, like, these are just thyroid related. And eventually it'll show up on a test and I can get some help for it. Um, and it was very frustrating to be, to feel like that. Right. So it made me even less want to go to a doctor. Cause I was just like, whatever, they don't want to help. They don't care. And, and I'm not like our healthcare system in the United States is crazy, right? Like I'm not trying to blame a specific physician. 
like because of the way our system works like you know your doctor talks to you for like she's allowed she or he's allowed to talk to you for like what 10 15 minutes at most or like your entire unit is only supposed to take 15 minutes combined with charting and everything else like I've, I mean it's just a broken system like your general practitioner is just like a gate keeper like they just refer you to other people like it's ridiculous like when I went in I had a very bad burn um a few years ago um I was scalded like f like my entire like basically like my entire top of my breasts and my chest here and my hand I was very bad um, I was badly scalded I was it's just second degree not third degree but I mean it was over a very large area of my body and I didn't go to the emergency room because the copay was too expensive. So I went to ultra or ultra care. I went to urgent care. <laughs> they were amazing and awesome and wonderful. Um, and they tried to refer me to a wound care specialist, but I was afraid that they wouldn't know who my insurance accepted. So I said, no, I'll try to get into my regular doctor tomorrow and you know, we'll go from there. Well, when I went into my doctor, like they were completely unhelpful and I again I don't even think it's necessarily their f I'm not I do think it was in part irresponsible of them because I go to um like a fee-reduced clinic um because I just believe that everybody should have access to health care so if my dollars could go into that clinic and help offset the price you know for somebody else I'm really happy to do it um and because I go to that clinic, I'm, I'm much more aware that like, like I am very lucky in that I had the, at the time the resources to look up what first aid um, approaches I needed to be able to go to the store and buy supplies to get me through until that wound care appointment, which was like, I think I went into the doctor on a Thursday and the wound care appointment couldn't happen until a Monday. And I had a very large area that was very susceptible to infection. Um, and so there are, other patients there don't have access to that and it's alarming that either they're forced to go to an emergency room which is so much more expensive for everybody um, or that they just aren't going to get the care that they need. Wow that was not a road I meant to go down uh, but it was just basically to say like I understand that the physicians are not in a great place like in terms of like what they're allowed to do what they have access to but that's garbage you know like that's garbage um yeah I could have I mean I might have had to go home to a place where nobody else cared about me and what didn't care if I was in pain or were you know was at risk for infection or you know I could have I could have not had a place to go and I would have been you know that much more susceptible to serious medical issue um, but anyway, so sorry, that was, so when I say, you know, if you're having a problem, go to the doctor, please don't think that I'm saying, because the doctor will always help you. They won't always help you, unfortunately. And if that's the place you've been in, I'm really sorry. But that is to all say that I, you deserve to be taken care of. You deserve to be taken care of. And I hope that you can find the, the strength in you to, to, to say that and to find somebody who will help take care. I had to give Gus a haircut. Oh, he looks like he had a homemade mom haircut. Sorry, Gus. But you guys don't care, right? Um. 
So anyway, if there was an awkward edit here, it's because I edited myself out crying and being weird. But if I didn't and I put it out there, well then, there you go. <laughs> I will talk to you next time. And until then, I hope you have an amazing solstice. I hope you enjoy your longest night. Um, and I hope you have a good holiday season in general. A happy Christmas or whatever you celebrate. I hope you enjoy yourself. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.